extended with, with, without uh, disconnecting the distributed generation. And the third question you said that the definition of the smart grid is an intelligent grid. How can we define something smart which to be in intelligent? Because smart and intelligent are two concepts in each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, again, you know, what I said in the definite, by the way, it's not my definite. We is a, you know, uh, you, you know, EPRI was involved and IEEE PS was involved and some European organizations. Well, what the slide said was, it's intelligently integrating all, you see, how do we conventionally operate power systems? There is load, you know, we're waiting, you know, load to be supplied as consumers, generation, Okay, and that's dispatched to, you know, whenever we need it, and et cetera, okay. There are many in between entities, transmission, distribution, et cetera. Now, and then again, these are large power plants operated by control center and so on. Now, in this concept, we are looking at, you know, many sources of generation, as I highlighted, you know, that plays an important role, you know, renewable resources, like one, okay. Now, when you have so many entities, you need to integrate their actions. You know, what helps us? Advances in, commu now communication technology is so advanced, you can uh, transmit even using wireless, wireless, et cetera. You know, exchange information, know what's going on, et cetera. The w word intelligent, whenever I used it, I put it in, you know, in, within quotes. So what do I mean by it? It's not, you know, like a lot of actions we take, if something happens, if it exceeds that value, we take an action. It's not like that. It's more analysis involved here, okay? And among others, by the way, G and others are big in this. I mean, you know, this is a good opportunity, you know. Uh, they have intelligent devices, which are not just, you know, you know, take action, trip or not trip. They take action based on, a, you know, some analysis information that they monitor, okay? Software as well. Looks at various things, does some analysis. I even mentioned, like, almost like what you would, you know, human you know, uh, mind is capable of analyzing. A lot of software is available. So monitoring it taking, you know, coordinating the actions of all, you know, elements involved in the system, okay, and then uh, integrating the action. Yeah. In terms of security, in fact, with distributed generation, you have a less of a, in a sense, a security problem. You know, if stability, and I don't know how familiar you are with it, when you're transmitting large amounts of power over transmission length and you have disturbances depending on how well the transmission network is designed and various protection controls, how well they are designed, you can you know, have an instability. With distributed sources generation, of course, you have to do the right things, controls and protections have to be designed properly, and that area is you know, fairly well understood, or at least by some of us. And then in terms of impact on security, you see you're not pushing power over long distances and, and over long lines, you know, you're reducing it, some of the generation is you know, locally, where the loads are. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, security level is improved. Okay. okay. Any other questions? I, I'm kind of curious. Sure, question. sure, sure. You know, I found particularly interesting the comment you made about what the Germans are finding about wind energy. Could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Uh, I mean, well, oh, yeah, by, by the way, it's, I mean, Germans highlighted it, others are looking at it. At Ontario Power Generation Company here, I don't know if some of you know Pew Carnito, way back, she worked in my department, she worked for Ontario Power She even wrote an article about, you know, challenges with wind and quoted the German experience, etc. The issue is this. Um, you see, wind, yeah, of course, you add it. You know, what type of generation use? Not synchronous machines, you know, asynchronous machines. You know, doubly fed induction generator is uh, more commonly used. So among other things, you know, voltage control and all that is uh, requires some addition of, you know, uh, equip, special equipment in the collector network, okay? Adds a, a bit to the cost, okay? But more importantly, where the big challenge is, you see wind power is, cyclical, okay? So it goes and don't. You're, if wind is, let's say, all of a sudden low, we can't suddenly the, you know, not stop supplying power to the consumer, okay? So to balance that, you need reserve generation, okay? Two types of reserve generation, spinning reserve, which takes care of, you know, continuous variations. The other is reserve generation, which can be started quickly, okay? And but what kind of generation? These are equipment, that you add sitting there, 
So that costs money. By the way, among others, you know, the quickest way to add summer generation these days is gas turbines and so on. Okay. By the way, things like gas turbine, combined cycle units, etc. A gas turbine running idle, zero power, just connected to system, uses 50% of the energy when it's at zero load. Okay. So cost of the fuel, cost of equipment, all that doesn't uh, you know come easy. If it's ten, let's say 10% wind energy. Yeah, you know, you, by managing your various resources, you may be able to do it. If you're looking at 30% of you know, energy and electricity being supplied from wind, you know, your reserve generation you know, capacity goes up. Okay, so two costs. One is grid integration costs, you know, is capital cost is, you know, is, is you know, fairly. Of course, you hopefully in the long run, you save on fuel costs, okay? But the bigger cost is, the um, you know money you need to spend on reserve generation, okay, and again from the control center system operation and you know anticipating the wind and then taking care of this and so on, it's um, you know adds new challenges. I'm not saying it's completely ne negative, but it's not like operating our con conventional sources of generation. It's a new store type of generation with its own you know characteristics, and we need to you know cope with it. But by the way, you probably know grid codes and other things are written, you know. So grid codes are written, you know, it's wind generation there. It should perform with so much power factor leading and lighting. And then so voltage control and all that, the, um, the wind generation, you know, supplier, you know, have to take care of all that. Not, not <laughs> always easy to do. Because you know, going back to Denmark, as I said, Denmark was the first country to use it. They, you know, over 20 years ago, they got into it in a big way. I think about 20% of electricity generated from, from wind. My contacts you know, from Denmark, even from the early days, say, this is not cheap. This is not cheap. Hopefully, there are other benefits, environmental type of benefits, et cetera, but it's not necessarily a cheaper way of uh, generating electricity. Thanks. Any further comments, questions, comments? Yes. Um, yes, very little time we have. Uh, one of the points you mentioned about uh, like for example, in Ontario Hydro, we have a lot um, with Quebec Hydro. We have a large amount of hydro generation, <coughs> generation using hydro power. So it's supposing that if you go back and replace the existing generators with the state-of-the-art generator, I'm sure the amount of efficiency of those generators and the amount of the energy we can generate is significantly large. Uh, uh, sure, okay, yeah, good point. By the way, you, you said, you know, some good things, which there's no, you know, actually, I wish Ontario Hydro existed. It doesn't anymore. You probably know that. There's no organization as Ontario Hydro now. No, it's, a, yeah. but, <laughs> it's a big change. Hydro One, transmission operator, of course, distribution companies, AESO system operator. And now, this is unique to Ontario. Other parts of the world don't have it. Ontario Power Authority. Planning became an issue. How do you coordinate planning, etc.? So Ontario wisely introduced, you know, they formed this uh, company, Ontario Power Authority. They were small, about 15, 20 people. Now there are 200 people, I believe. <laughs> anyway, it's a separate issue, but that's side on the side issue. Your comment about no, no, two things. Is, yeah, I know. And let me answer. Okay. I don't think I finished my question. Okay. My question is, supposing if you take a time as a project, replace one of the old 40 years old generator with a state of the art generator, the amount of electricity we can generate using the existing water resource we have, in my opinion, will replace thousands of DGs you would add onto the system. Okay, yeah. I, I, thousands of DGs onto the system is going to corrupt the system a lot more from the security point. No. There is, you're, you're, I don't know what it's based on. The old turbines, as I said, if you re, I, mean, I told you, there was one slide on it, 5%, 5%, yes, yeah. By the way, you also don't understand Ontario sources of generation. Ontario hydro generation supplies less than 20% of the total you know, load in the Ontario system. Yeah, so 5% yeah, increase on, you know, uh, on you know, 20% of generation is not going to meet all of our generation needs. No, okay. No, but yeah. that 5% of one generator, let's say the capacity of the generator is what, uh, a large size capacity of one. And 
capacity of the yeah. Total load, Ontario load is around 40,000, 40, 35, 40,000 megawatts, 40,000, eh? Yeah, total the peak load. Yeah, but it's changing. I want to 35 capacity. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, by the way, let me complete. Okay. Yeah. The uh, much of the generation comes from nuclear power. Yeah. Because uh, let me com uh, let me complete this uh, my answer. Then you 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 uh, make uh, We exhausted our hydro resources. You know, it's, it's first started as a hydro company. Okay. We exhausted our potential for tapping into hydro uh, sources, uh, you know, you know, back in the uh, you know uh, 1960s. Okay, and then we started adding, of course, some thermal stations. Lambton was built in the mid 60s, and uh, late 60s, and then a you know, coal-fired station, and uh, no, Darlington. Uh, why don't I complete it? And then you know, uh, you can you know answer it. You ask a question and. You have a highly opinion, uh, opinionated yeah. view on this, yeah, and you don't let me answer. Anyway, let me complete it. The reality is two comments. Hydropower is limited. We have used all of the available sources of hydropower. And it can supply about 20% of our total load in the system. Okay? No. Two things. No. Now, if you increase you know, the actions I described, you know, like what I said, if you improve the efficiency, et cetera, you can get you know, 5% more, which is what I'm promoting. Okay, um, Some of us are. Two things, some downtime, bit of cost involved, et cetera. And again, you know, we went and presented it to of, of all the papers, BC Hydro, 100%, um, almost 100% Hydro. Yeah. What are we? Oh, yeah, you know, you know, backed away from it. The head of the VP of generation, we couldn't even convince him to get started on this. No, no, yeah. Like, I think my Sure. Uh, yeah. Any no, no. generation. I just took hydro as an example. Mm. Any, let's say there is a job, even thermal plant that have a generator. It's been working there for 40 years. The efficiency of this compared to the state of the art generator. We could uh, explain to me. All right, you're making a comment. Tell me what the state of the art is. How it's more efficient. In terms of the generators. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hydro turbines. Hydro turbines. You know the same old uh, you know no, turbine no, designs are there. State even the, the newly generated, the, the size of the generator is much smaller for the same capacity, right? I wouldn't say much smaller, relatively smaller. Yeah. A 50-year-old generator designed sure. at the speed yeah. and yeah. the type by of the, force, and, 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 and so. Could be. Yeah. By the way, if you look at reality, how efficient they are, and by replacing them by a new turbine, and looking at cost, and how, effi how much efficiency you can improve, you're looking at a modest increase of 5 to 10 percent, okay? Yeah. And it's a busy question of, yeah, I mean, again, that's what I'm saying. Though, you know, we can reprofile it, increase it, etc. Replacing them all is quite expensive, I'm downtime. Really have to do it yeah, they downtime. Yeah. Well, my question is, in terms of the security of the system, from the voltage, uh, the getting onto the grid, like, I'm, I'm trying to compare with one of those big projects replacing the generator, giving 5% of more, maybe even more, we don't know, 5% even if you take. How many DGs has to work for this to put that same amount of power into the grid? By the way, you didn't understand what I said. It's, you know, DG is, you know, yeah, DG could be even more efficient than less costly than some of these uh, sources of hydro generation. You're looking at, let's say, Ontario system, 20% uh, of uh, what, uh, 30,000 megawatts is what, uh, let, let's say, um, you know, 8,000, uh, 9,000 uh, generation. And 8,000, 5% of 8,000 is how much? Yeah, you know, whatever it is, yeah. We're, but we are looking at potential for, you know, more. That's one. The other is, again, hydropower, you, they are there where the sources are. You're moving that power over, you know, transmission lines, etc. cetera, the losses associated cost of transmission lines, et cetera, okay? So with distributed generation, you're eliminating some of the you know, costs associated with transmission distribution. Also, the big thing is the distributed generation I mentioned, okay? They are very good devices. You know, I talked about fuel cell, okay? It's a very efficient fuel you know, source of you know, uh, device and also environmentally clean, et cetera. And the fuel used is, you know, what we are treating as waste, et cetera. 
Okay? So the point is the distributed generation is, you know, even if today if we had to build a hydro plant at a particular source and then adding a distributed generation with the new types of devices available, if you do a good analysis in many cases, this becomes cheaper, cleaner, and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, more effective. Yeah, closer yeah. to the low is better. Yeah, Again, we are talking about. Yeah, but, but without, yeah, I think we'll have time to discuss this. I guess, unfortunately, we have run out of time. So I, I want to thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank uh, Dr. Kundor for his presentation. Thank you for coming again. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. your, 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 your presentation very much and your, your presence here. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Yeah.